Welcome back guys for another fictionalhead.com quick tutorial. Uh, today's one we're going to show you how to take an existing selection and use that to kind of fake rim lighting on an image or render or something. Uh, and I'm going to use this one here of Toad because he's already clipped off his background because he was a render to begin with. But you could do this with any sort of selection provided that you clipped it off of its background if it wasn't already clipped off of its background. Um, so in this instance, <clears throat> if I wanted to add a little extra lighting around kind of the, the rim of this render to make it look like there was more coming from behind him, uh, similar to what was done here with 3D but even more amplified, what I can do is take the render or the photo and duplicate it and then go to my levels and bring in the white point until I get a sufficient amount of lighting or rim lighting that I want. Uh, and once you've done that, just hit OK. And then if you control click the layer or the image of the layer, it'll select your selection. Um, if yours is clipped out manually, just do use your path to clip it off the background. Um, but the tip is that if you go to select under the select menu and do modify and contract, um, and this is going to essentially contract the selection by however many pixels you choose. So in this instance, the amount of lighting, I'm going to say 10 is probably about right. So if I contract it, you'll see that it brought that selection in 10 pixels from the edge all the way around. So if I now have that selection and I click the layer mask tool or the layer mask button while I'm on this newly lightened up layer, what that's going to do is um, only leave the lit up part in that closer selection so you can see that it's brighter on the inside there. So now if I click that layer mask and hit invert, I have this uh, sort of lit up halo that goes all the way around the character or render or whatever it is. And then if I take that, I can use that as my basis for the additional rim lighting that I want to add. And a quick way to soften that into the render or into your photo is just to make a folder and then um, I'm going to control click my original layer so that I have the original selection and then make a layer mask on that folder. So now um, any edits that I do inside that folder won't be able to come out into this area here. They'll all have to be bound within that original clip, clipping path. So then if I take my rim lighting and put it in that folder, I can now um, unlink them. I usually just do by habit, you don't have to. But if you grab the layer mask of that original shading and start to blur that with a Gaussian blur, you can see here um, it's really softening that into the scene. And if we look at our layer mask, you can see how much it's blurring it by. So if I really kind of blur that out, um, now I've got this nice kind of diffuse lighting around the rim of my object, which in some places it might be too much, some places might not be enough, but you can use this tip to kind of brighten around the edges and then all you have to do is go into your um, layer mask of the folder that it's in uh, and start painting in black anywhere that you don't want that rim light to come in. So like. Um, if I didn't want that rim light on his face here because there already is some, just kind of, you know, click, get rid of it, add it in some places, don't add it in others. Um, and then you can see here if I turn off that base layer and if I just enter and let's just do a, a white layer, you can see this is that extra lit um, data that's been added. So you can kind of just go through. Um, and you know, paint away where you don't want that uh, brightness to be added and paint in where you do want it to be added. And even on top of that, you can blur your other layer mask again uh, to really kind of just soften it into the shot however you want. Um, and I always say, you know, it's best to get as much of this stuff done kind of in camera as you can. Like try to get your render looking as best you can before you render it. But um, you can see 
this was the original render that I had outputted from 3D Studio Max. And then with my final adjustments um, that I did in Photoshop, you can tell that I just kind of brightened up the side of his uh, toadstool head and a little bit more on his chest and side of his face and a couple of the mushrooms down here I lit up a little bit more. Um, and just small tweaks like that can really help add vibrancy to the image. Um, and it's real easy to do in Photoshop because by using the levels you're essentially just pushing the light up manually so it really uh, helps sell the effect of the extra lighting. Um, so that's the tip. If you have any questions let me know. Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube uh, doesn't really matter and I hope it was helpful.